Okay, good afternoon everyone. Shalom Aleichem. Baruchem Avon. We're continuing in the Sefer at Sipi Yeshua. I want to thank my good friend Rav Gedalia Schwartz for sending out the reminders because he reminded me to make sure to be on the shir today. <laughs> okay, so uh, yesterday we began the third parak, and the Chavetz Chaim said that until now we were discussing the obligation of awaiting the coming of Mashiach Mitzad HaSeichel. The logical obligation, where we look at Hashem's track record, everything He's promised us. When we were in Egypt, every single detail came true. So therefore, we, we based on that a proven track record, we know that But now we're going to speak about the obligation from Chazal. Where Chazal tells us that this is one of the primary questions that one is asked after 120. And yesterday we learned a very powerful Psikta Rabasi, where HaKadosh Baruch Hu says to the Tzaddikim, it's not good that you're doing, that you love the Torah and you don't love my Malchus. Even Tzaddikim that love the Torah, they will be demanded, they will be indicted if they did not await the coming of Mashiach. In other words, it's not enough. It's not enough to learn Torah. It's beautiful to learn Torah. It's wonderful to learn Torah. But it's not enough. A person has to couple that with being Mitzap Yeshua. And yesterday we learned the Yalkut and Eicha, that at the t- time of the Chorben, Hashem said to Yitzchak, don't say that maybe we won't return. There will be a generation that will be Mitzap for my Malchus and they will be redeemed immediately. And yesterday we explained the Pasuk, V'yesh tikva la'acharisech, when you're mekaveh, when you await the end, then v'shavu banum l'gvula. In other words, what's holding up the gula is uh, not awaiting the Mashiach. The Rabbi Yaakov Emden writes that if we would only have this one Avera, that we don't await the gula, that alone is enough to prolong our galas. And now we're going to learn something um, very powerful. The Chavetz Chaim says, We all know that we are warned to distance from falsehood. Like it says, From a false word, distance yourself. Even if the matter is not outright falsehood. If there's even a small admixture of falsehood, of something that's not true, Gamkin Hushar We're also warned against this, as we see in the Gemara and Shuas Daflam and Aleph. Vizehu Afilum Humadabram Ishek This warning that we're commanded to avoid even something which is slightly not fully true is even if we're speaking to someone like ourselves, Vachoshikin Humadam Nasibi. So certainly, let's say if we were speaking to the most eminent member of the Jewish people, the Kavachoimer ben Benoishal Kavachem, and all the more so. Imhumadabrim Hashem Isbarach. If one is speaking directly to God, Imhumadabavada Yishlizar Menoish Dabr Shaker Lefanav. Oh boy, do you have to be careful not uh, to be careful not to speak falsehood. Ukumay Shakasov, like the Pasuk says in Tehillim, Doi Vershkarim La Yikain Lenegad Einoi. One who speaks falsehood will not be established before my eyes. So we know that MS is the hallmark characteristic of Hashem. We therefore have to distance ourselves. It's not enough not to speak falsehood. We have to distance ourselves from it. And not just falsehood, even something which is uh, not completely true. And imagine this, is, this applies even when speaking to an ordinary person. All well, the more so if you're speaking to a tzaddik, a gadol. And it goes without saying, if you're standing before God, how Hashem abhors falsehood. The Gemara in Chagiga tells us about the Arba Shenichnas Lepardes. They said, when you come to blue marble, don't cry out, water, water. Because that's falsehood. And upstairs, in front of Hashem, Doi v'rshkarim lo'yikain l'neged enoi. This is even if you don't invoke the name of God in the matter that you're speaking. Imagine if you invoke the name of God and you spoke to God and you lied. That's not a good idea. 
You certainly need great carefulness. Therefore, it is wondrous. How can we say three times a day? Aleinu. And we conclude, We say in Aleinu, Therefore we hope to you, Hashem our God, to see swiftly the splendor of your might. Here it is, we say to God, Hashem, we're awaiting your redemption. And we say it by invoking two names of Hashem. Hashem Eloikeinu. Now, if in truth we were awaiting that Hashem reveal Himself swiftly, every person would have to prepare himself to know the subject of the service of Hashem. All the halachas that are relevant to bringing Karbanos and the Beis HaMikdash. Now, now the Chavetz Chaim brings in in the third chapter what he considers a fundamental aspect of awaiting the coming Mashiach, and that is learning and knowing Halacha Lamaisa, what to do, Hilchasa Lamashicha, when Mashiach comes. How are you going to bring Karbanos? What? How are you going to be able to observe the Halachas and the Beis HaMikdash? Because if you're really awaiting the coming of Mashiach, then you need to prepare to know what to do. The dugma, Mitzab and Shavay Amalch Ba'ir. For example, if you were expecting and awaiting the king to come, Afila Ba'iza Sfek Sveika, even if you had, there was a remote possibility, wouldn't everyone be Mikashtin at Kalar Chavis Lechvaida? Wouldn't they adorn the streets in his honor? Afila Miya Ela for Chavis Yer, even if there would be a thousand streets in the city. Misafik Pen Yisa Dach Rechavza, maybe the king will travel down that road. So you're going to get that road ready. So therefore, it says the Chavetz Chaim, if we really are awaiting Hashem's arrival, then wouldn't we prepare ourselves to know the halachos that will be nagea them? Because then all the laws will be relevant. If if the learned people, if the sages don't know what to do, it's going to be shameful. So why is it that we don't learn the halachos of, of, uh, that will be relevant when Mashiach comes? You know why? It's only because with our mouths alone, we're speaking before Hashem something that has no semblance of truth. We tell God we're awaiting His arrival, but we actually do not mean it even in the slightest. We are totally not awaiting Hashem's arrival. Especially, specifically, to mention God's name in connection of this. When you think about yourself, you actually invoke God's name more than 40 times a week. Twice for Shachras, twice for Mincha, twice for Marev. And that means you're doing it 42 times a week. You're saying, Hashem Eloikeinu, I am eagerly anticipating your arrival. Actually, Hashem, I'm not really. I'm just saying these words because I'm on autopilot. Gimel Pamelenu, Uvechesh Bain Shana, in the course of a year, who Maskir Israel Payim, you're saying God's name more than 2,000 times for nothing. You're saying to Hashem that you're awaiting His arrival. And the truth is, you're not waiting at all. So, this behooves us to make good on our word. A word is a word. And if you're going to say that you're waiting, and if you're going to invoke Hashem's name, you better be actually waiting. And waiting means preparing. And what does it mean to prepare for Hashem's arrival? Preparing means to know what to do. And the only way to know what to do, says the Chavetz Chaim, is to be proficient in the halachos that will be noigea then.
Okay, we'll pick it up tomorrow. Have an amazing evening. Call tough.